why I lift my voice Why I sing to you You're the reason What genuine Christian workers devotion involves? What genuine Christian workers devotion involves? What it entails? What it entails? Taking a cue from uh, the teaching of our Father and the Lord, one of the things that can make us to stand one of the things that can make us to continually be devoted unto God is what we are going to be looking on. And we'll be taking our foundational text from 1 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 13 to 16. 1 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 13 to 16. And I read from here. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. The last verse. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. You shall save yourself and them that hear thee. For Christians work out to be devoted, truly devoted, the word truly devoted, there are daily disciplines that must be inculcated. I've observed in recent times that we have a lot of seminars, programs, and when we go to those programs, we have been blessed. And there's no doubt about that. But after a while, those blessings fizzle away or it's like there is no impact. We have had reason for some of us that we engage in some spiritual activities, maybe after reaching some certain point in our life. And having prayed, we receive grace, we receive power, we have been empowered, but after a while, those things do fizzle out. It's like it's a waste. What is always causing this? For us to be truly devoted, we need discipline we need discipline um i once know a man of god that i respected so much and if there's anything i've seen in his life he has been consistently consistent in ministry and what really endear me to him is that he's always fresh when you think maybe he has you know, he has come to his speak. The next time you will hear him or you will see him or you will have a program, he's always very fresh. And um, I got close to him. It's now late anyway. I got closer to him. And one day while I, whenever I'm on break and I'm on only day, I'm not, I'm not out of the country, I like to go and spend some time with him. And I asked him, sir, what is your secret? You know, I expected him to have told me, you know, you have to fast, you have to do this, you have to do that. But he told me something. He said, he laughed and he said, discipline. Discipline. And if there is anything that is missing in the faith today, in the house of God, with we workers, with we Christian, it's like we lack discipline. And uh, permit me to define discipline as this. What is discipline? 
Sim discipline simply is doing what you should do when you should do it whether you like it or not. Though you may have some other definitions for discipline, but discipline is simply doing what you should do when you should take note of the word when. When you should do it and whether you feel like it or not. Do you know that at times you feel tired praying? How many of you feel like that once in a while? Please, let me see. Let me see your hands up. Yes. Do you know that at times you feel like you should not go to church? Do you know that even as a pastor, at times we feel like not even preaching, like we should run away somewhere. But what keeps you going in your devotional life? Because as a human being, until we get to heaven, as a human being, we will often go weary. The book of Isaiah says that even the youth shall what? Shall faint. They shall go weary. Even knowledge shall fail. Do you know that at times, even strong men come to a point whereby they are weak. But what keeps you going? You and I going. Or what will keep us going and be devoted in our personal devotional life is discipline. And please don't forget that definition. Very simple definition is doing what you should do when you should do it whether you feel like it or not at times do you know that it takes discipline for you to wake up in the night when you are so tired when sleep is sweet and to pray do you know that it takes discipline after you have fasted for days waiting on the lord and after finishing a program the program was so successful a lot of practical manifestations happening and just like when you feel like resting god just say please i need you again and you say ah baba god ah, you won't kill me one night i remember i, I was so tired and uh, i finished a program and having thanked god i was about to sleep i just hear god saying please you need to stand up and do some prayers do you know that at times, once in a while, when you are closer to God, you, you abuse God? Praise the Lord. How many of you normally abuse God? God bless you. Do you know that we don't say it, we say it in our heart. The Bible says that a have you forgotten the book of Psalm? When it says, somebody says in his heart, there is no what? Who says in his heart? <laughs> Eh? a fool he doesn't say it with his mouth he say it with his heart do you know at times we say god in our heart too we say nonsense we have been praying since all these days you never answer us thank god he sees he hears but he never do anything and uh, i didn't stand up and uh, well i didn't stand up when i woke up in the morning i prayed and some things happened that if not for the grace of God, it will have cost me life. So it takes discipline to be able to do these things. So daily activities are a direct product of daily devotions. Daily activities of disciplines are the direct product of daily devotions. Now, let, let me say this. Um... If there is anything I've learned in life and in this work of ministry, it is doing some things repeatedly over and over in such a way that you get used to it, but if you are not careful, you get familiar with them and you miss the tempo. Hello? Now, doing something repeatedly, often and often, that you get used to it and if you are not careful if you are not careful enough you get familiar with it and you lose the temple therein you lose the ingredient you lose the real thing do you know that many of us we started so well and our devotion was so sweet but it has merely become now a routine and we are losing the fervency the fervor in our intimacy with god 
I pray today that the Lord will restore you back in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on. I said the Lord will restore us back in the name of Jesus. One day, I was listening to a message of one of my ministers and I was writing down the messages. But I was writing down with the view of critiquing him. You know, I want to see the way they are preaching and I was writing his fault. I was writing down the fault. Yes, he did this. The poise was not good enough. The grammatical construction is not good. Yes, the homiletics is not good. And God said, my son, for how long will you do this? Why not listen to that message and forget those things? Because I've been doing that often and often. And it's part of my own personal devotion. But I am getting familiar with it. And it's losing its fervency. Do you know that whenever you, for example, most of us will be in church tomorrow by the grace of God. Say amen to that. So when you get to church, what do you do first? In your service, in your order of service, what do you do first? Eh? Praise. Do you know that times you may get used to the praise and it becomes nuisance? Do you know that at times you get used to some songs, you lose the fervor, the real spirit in that song. Oh, touch me not, oh, gentle say. If your baba, oh, do. You all put those adjusters without getting the real safe in that song. And, you know, we, we, this, this, these are some of the dynamics of the devotion we are talking about. And it takes discipline to really get the real thing out of it. Do you know that at times, even as a servant of God, if you are here, the anointing becomes so familiar that your devotion is questionable. And we have to be very, very careful about this. Now, what are those things you and I needed to put in place so that our devotional life will always be evergreen? Number one, your worship as a lifestyle. Your worship as a lifestyle. Every genuine Christian worker who desires true devotion must know how to worship God. And worship is actually what one does to please Lord. Not worship song. Okay? Worship is a lifestyle. Okay? It goes beyond just singing. Worship is genuine demonstrations of one's love in total submission to his will. Therefore, all devoted Christians are worshippers who worship God in spirit and in what? In truth. Quite unfortunately, many churches worship God in spirit but not in truth. They worship God in spirit and in order. Of course, God is a God of order. They are so meticulous about routine that they lose the real thing called God in their worship. So, one of the disciplines you must inculcate is that your life must be a life of worship. Either you are in the kitchen, either you are in the toilet, either you are in your workplace, either you are in the car, you are driving. In fact, I've discovered that the best place to do worship is in the toilet and in the car when you are driving. Especially in the old up. When somebody just wants to overtake you and do you know that most, most people that drive in Lagos are habitual abusers. Even men of God. I remember in those days I was driving and somebody was trying to get the road with me in an old up and I tried to, you know, I wouldn't give him, I'm on the right lane, but he want to just go in. And they managed to, and he almost crapped my car. And I, I, I was about to say, ah, oh yeah. Lo and behold, it was my usher. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. And he to say, ah, ah, sorry, sir, pastor, ah, sorry, sir. So I said, you want to cross the lane? He said, you almost abused me, sir. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. So worship must be what? Your lifestyle. You know, it, it, it's not until you kneel down that you worship or you pray. Even as you are seated here, it is part of what? Your worship. So much worship must be your lifestyle. Number two, daily prayer. A Christian worker that desires a devoted life must engage in spending hours before God in heartfelt Holy Spirit inspired and biblically correct prayer. Wow. 
if there's anything i like about the church in recent time is that we pray ah, the church can pray especially the church in nigeria but most prayers are not correct they are not biblically correct and let me say this let me say this every prayer you pray and it's not biblically correct and you receive the answer it is not god that answer you let me tell somebody let me tell somebody what i've just said let me tell somebody Amen. Let, let me say this. In all devotional issues, in all doctrinal issues, one thing that is common to every religion is prayer. Is what? Prayer. The Muslims pray. Is that not so? The Ogoni too, they pray. Is that not so? The Surosiasims, they pray. The Confucianists, they pray. The Hinduists, they pray. The Buddhists, they pray. Every religion, what? Pray. And do you know that they get answers? But any prayer you pray and is not biblically correct is not a prayer. So your prayer must be sorted, must be the foundation must be from from the scriptures. And that's why you must be led. You must be led. While I believe that prayer should be outlined, you can, you can write out your prayer. But real prayer, devotional prayer, is not the prayer you are even you've written down. I, I've seen several at times. I write some prayers down, and when I get to the pulpit, I want to be leading. I say, "Lord, take control." Everything changes, and it takes discipline to do that. Your daily prayer life. And where do you pray? You pray everywhere. That's why Paul said that we should pray without what, without ceasing. As you are going, you are praying. As you are in the car, you are praying. As you are in the church, you are praying. As you are eating, you are praying. In your mind. Busy your mind up with prayer. Hello, hello, church. Hello, wonderful workers. Now, I've come to realize that there are a lot of things competing with our devotional life, especially prayer life. We have a lot of things that are choking us up in our time, especially these days of IT. A lot of things. Somebody wants to pray. Please, discipline yourself that whenever you want to pray and you want to devotionally pray is part of your devotional life make sure that you are out with anything that can distract you somebody is praying and he's with bluetooth on his ear in his ear he's praying and as he's praying a call came in say hello hello say, that's not devotion so your daily prayer life is part of the discipline that you must observe number three your fellowship with the word of god your fellowship with the word of god and let me say this you must have some non-negotiables what do i call them non-negotiable there are some of you you hate lying is you nobody can negotiate with you on that some of you whether you whether anybody come and preach another scripture to you about tight you know that as far as life is concerned you must tight nobody can preach that with you it's non-negotiable so also with the word of god you must have some non-negotiable and non-negotiable in our handout is being put in an acronym nbnb what is the nbnb no bible study no breakfast no bible study no breakfast and thank god for it in our time you know even from your phones you don't need to lay hands on bible even from your instead of using you know there is a lot of positive things you can use your phone for Thank God most Bible has some apps, some applications that have, uh, sorry, most phones have some applications that have Bible. So, you know that before taking breakfast, even as you are going to the restroom, you may put some Bible there or you may go with your phone. Not to make call. You put your phone on offline. Okay? There is something on your phone, we call it earport, earline mode or earport mode. You put it there so that you don't have distractions. So, and as you are there, before breakfast or you are in the toilet, you are with your phone reading your bible you are reading your bible and in our time we also have some applications that you know you have your audio bible there somebody shout hallelujah so no bible study no breakfast another one that is there is nd nd no devotion no dinner no devotion no dinner this greatly influences our devotional life fellowship with the word of god to a devoted christian worker is fellowship with god and this includes number one reading of the bible 
Number two, studying of the Bible. Number three, meditating on the Bible. Please, what you don't meditate, you cannot activate. Hello? What you don't what? Do you know that before you grow annoyed, before that anger came out of you, you have meditated on it. You have meditated on it. What makes anger powerful? What makes it energetic is your regurgitating, your thinking, your, 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 your meditating on that anger. Somebody abuses you and when you're hard of it, you keep it in your mind and then you begin to think of that thing. You begin to dwell on it. You begin to dwell on it. In fact, you begin to rehearse. When you see him, this is what you are going to do. Something we just tell you after you see. Do you know that? Funny enough, there will be a mental picture in your mind of what you are going to do as you begin to meditate. Say, when you see him, just boom face. Just boom face. Okay. Thank you. Just boom face. And you begin to activate it. So, remember, because a lot of people have been saying, I've been reading the word of God, but I don't see the impact. The truth of the matter is, do you meditate on what you have read? So that you can activate it. It's very, very important. Somebody shout hallelujah. Then recitation. Please do something. Everybody look up here, please. Please. Whenever you want to really activate your meditation, try to mumble the word. The word of God. Try to show it. Most of us, we quote Joshua 1.8, but we don't really understand it. He said, this word of the law this book of the law must what from where you must read it out you must read it out when you are reading the word of god don't just keep silent and read mm. say it mumble it recite it because by doing that you are loading you are loading it's just like when you buy a risha card when you buy a risha card you want to load it do you just place it near the answer what do you do you press it you you log it in so while you are reciting when you are murmuring that word say it out okay you are loading you are you you are putting it in your mind so that it can work for you i see this working for you in jesus name daily spiritual goal setting every time you wake up you must have some spiritual goals that you will set for yourself for example you may say okay i want to embark on reading so 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 portions of the scripture today you may say okay today I will be embarking on one hour prayer or fasting or today I will be reading the book of so 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 or today I will be listening to the tape of so 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 it's part of goal setting always make sure that you design your life daily with spiritual goals number five the pastor Binger, I believe has talked about evangelism and many of the pastors there have talked about the evangelism but it's one of the disciplines of weak Christians is one of the disciplines of we Christians that we must be involved in. Devotion to evangelism. Number six, devotion to the unity and love among brethren. Psalm 113 verse 1 to 3 says, has a lot to say about that. Devoted Christian workers are devoted to the unity and love among Christian brethren and this always results in genuine heart service devoid of prayer, pride and selfishness. We must be devoted to love and unity among we brethren. We must avoid anything that will cause anchor and disunity among brethren. Has anybody offended you? Just know that he's a woman being. Just even if he has refused to acknowledge that he has offended you, leave it like you have rightly heard in one of the teachings that some people are keeping malice and uh, bitterness against somebody. Meanwhile, even the person they are keeping it against does not even what know about it. Life must be enjoyed, not must not endured. Let me tell somebody said you, you must enjoy your life. Don't endure it. Don't allow bitterness in you against anybody. Somebody shout hallelujah. Devotion to being a genuine ambassador of Jesus Christ in the world. This they have emphasized on it. Are you somebody that through you, through your character, people will follow you to Christ? I've been to many churches, by the grace of God, I pastor some churches, and I've seen many people, some people decided not to come to the church if that person is a member of this church. 
we must be a true representative of jesus christ and we must represent jesus well in our action in our words in our dressing in everything we do i went to visit in those days one of our deacons in our church i just i was being led to go and pray for him in his place of work and when i got there i said i'm looking for deacon so 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 and people say not in this place ah, deacon then later i now remember his surname i said uh, mr so 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 you know i said somebody said ah! because he was a personal manager personal manager and he was really an agbako i don't know what it interprets as agbako in uh, i don't know but he made something very horrible ah, they said but and in fact when i was shocked when they knock at his door he said turn here who is that ah. and the person began to hail he said he said yes waliwa, waliwa. And when I enter, and I saw, lo and behold, my own deacon, Baba Bako. You must be a good ambassador of God. Devotion to giving, please. You cannot get the best in life until you are having the discipline of devotional giving. Never say you don't have. There is something you have to give at a point in time. We have limited our giving to only finance shall we rise up on our feet shall we rise up on our feet join somebody on your role hold somebody beside you on your role and we are going to pray this prayer together make sure you hold somebody in your role and the prayer is this see after me Oh Lord my Father, grant this one the grace to be disciplined in their devotional life. Please help that person to pray in the name of Jesus.